The following presentation is not based on a true story. It is a true story. God is at peace with the world. He is at peace with you. How can this be? Jesus died for your sins. Jesus was entombed. Jesus was roused the third day. Stay tuned to the end of this video for links to related videos, and I'll show you a quick test to see if your favorite Bible version is a rat poison Bible version. I never was a King James only guy, but I did use the King James primarily for about 10 years. I was using it when God revealed the truth of the salvation of all to me in the winter of 2009. I even based most of the quotes of verses in my book Jesus and Hitler on the King James Bible in 2012. The big truth of the salvation of all is contained within every Bible version that I'm aware of. The problem is that most of these also contain mistranslations that cause people to doubt and ignore the truth that is right in front of them. Then, in these Bible versions, when the truth and the lie clash, people tend to believe the lie because that's what traditional, mainstream, orthodox Christianity teaches, eternal conscious torment. Most people don't want to be outside of orthodoxy because that means that they're going to be in a minority. And most people don't like to be in the minority. Following is an exchange between myself and Zealous One in the comments of my video, Aeon does not mean eternity or forever. Zealous One did not reveal the fact that he or she was a King James only user and defender until we were well into the written debate. I think the whole exchange can be of benefit. Then after that, I'll show you how to answer a King James only defender once they reveal to you that they are loyal to the dead King of England and not the living immortal King of the universe. Over here on YouTube, my video Aeon does not mean eternity or forever. Scrolling down through some of the comments here, we see the initial comment by Zealous One two weeks ago. Context matters. The word ion can be used in the temporal and eternal context. The King Eternal and the et Eternality of God, for example. Paul said after we believe his gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. A lost soul must believe the gospel to be saved. That seal of the Holy Spirit isn't automatic for unbelievers. My reply... Thank you for watching and for your comment, Zealous One. Context does matter and words matter too. Aeon, in no context, means eternity. Eternity has no beginning and no end. An aeon has a beginning and an end. You're attempting to stretch the word beyond its meaning. Can't do that. You are correct. God is eternal. He has no beginning and no end. You are trying to stuff this great truth of God where it doesn't belong by using the phrase, the king eternal, I assume from 1 Timothy 1.17. That's a bad translation in many popular Bibles in 1 Timothy 1.17. Eternal is an adjective misused by these bad translation in this verse to translate the plural Greek noun ionon. A proper translation is the king of the eons. See the concordant literal New Testament. This describes God, it does not limit him. Only a biased translator would turn a noun into an adjective. I think God was pretty clear about not messing with his words, but some men revere tradition more than God. You are correct again, those who believe are sealed with the Holy Spirit, but their salvation was already accomplished before they believed, John 3.17. Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also, on hearing the word of truth, the evangel of your salvation, in whom, on believing also, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. First, they heard the word of truth, the good news of their, your, salvation. Then they believed that Jesus had already saved them, and they were sealed. They were already saved, they just hadn't realized it yet, and been given the faith to believe the fact. God's will is clear. Our Savior God wills that all mankind be saved, and come into a realization of the truth. All will be sealed when God grants them a realization of the truth and belief in the finished work of his son, his death, and his resurrection. See Philippians 1.29. The fact that God will be all in all is automatic for all people because it is solely the work of God in Christ that accomplishes the all in all. And Zealous One replies, I did not attempt to do anything. I told you the word ion can and does mean both temporary and eternal depending on the context it is used. If you're going to apply the same temporal meaning of the word to the places where it conveniences the universalism point of view, then you can't ignore the same word where it is used to describe God himself. First Timothy 1.17, the word ion is used there, and it was used in the context of eternal. Titus 1.2, the same word ion is used to describe eternal life, and it was used in the context of eternal. 
Revelations 4, 9 through 10, 5, 14, 10, 6, 15, 7, all describe the eternality of God using the same word ion. And yes, it was used here as well in the context of eternal. I'm sorry, but universalism is not what the Bible teaches. I know it is a comforting thought that one day everyone would be reconciled back to God, but we cannot allow our feelings to blind us from the truth. This is why it is so important that we get the gospel out there. Yes, God will be all in all in the end, but the lost are not part of that all in all. They don't exist in life eternal. They exist in death eternal, which is cut off from God. They have no more conversation. The conversation of the saved continues forever. And then he threw in this second comment in between my answer to his previous comment. This is where he reveal, started to reveal his uh, belief about the King James Bible. He says, the biggest Jesus, do you believe the King James Bible is a bad translation? Which I reply to that down here. Zealous one, yes, its inconsistencies are numerous. Its mistranslations of Ion and Ionios are especially deceptive. But let's get back to my response um, from his most recent long comment. Zealous one, you are being very sloppy with God's words, God's very precise words. Probably because your go-to translations have been very sloppy with his words, and you're placing your faith in poor translations. Wherever Ion and Ionios are used in relation to God, it is revealing him and his workings within the eons. It is not saying anything about his being eternal. That truth can be found elsewhere in the scriptures, not where Ion and Ionios are referring to God. It apparently doesn't bother you when translators replace a noun with an adjective, 1 Timothy 1.17. It should, because that's probably not their only blatant error. And your use of the false expressions life eternal and death eternal reveals that you do not understand the eons and God's purpose for them, Ephesians 1.10 and 3.11. Because eternity has no beginning or end, it is impossible for any created being to have eternal life or eternal death because that being's life had a beginning and its death will have a beginning. The word eternal describes things with no beginning or end, and only God himself has that distinction. A proper translation is life eonian, concordant literal New Testament. Continuing on, the salvation of all through Christ is clearly taught in the scriptures. You just don't believe God's words, 1 Timothy 4.10. And yes, this great truth is a very comforting thought. The truth does actually set people free from the gospel you are apparently proclaiming to them. The truth that Jesus actually did what he was sent to do is comforting beyond measure. Your truth, which seems to be annihilation, if I'm reading between the lines correctly, has no comfort for billions of people. God can't be all in all according to you. He may be all in some in your view, but not all in all. Don't deceive yourself into thinking that your view is in any way all in all. It's just a word game you're playing to try to comfort yourself because your doctrine does not culminate in the true all in all. Getting the gospel out there is a good thing, but if your gospel includes telling people they can be lost and dead forever, then it's a bad thing. You're not telling people the truth. Just stay at home and save people from having to hear your good news. You're lying to them. You're telling them basically that Jesus didn't save them, even though that's why he was sent, to save the world, John 3:17. You are proclaiming another Jesus who is a failed savior. You are telling them they must complete what he only started. And now Zealous One comes to reveal that he does adhere to the King James only. And I like, I like what he says here. First and foremost, I use only the King James Bible. Well, he didn't say that first and foremost. He said this well into our uh, exchange here. He says, the biggest Jesus, first and foremost, I use only the King James Bible. Secondly, I don't apply any personal perspective to the scripture as you do when you say things like no created being can have eternal life. I don't limit God in his power. Yes, a created being can have and be given eternal life and eternal death. Life begins when God creates it, and he can choose to give it eternal life if he so chooses. That eternal life was paid for by eternal blood. If you want to talk about word games, then look in a mirror. Universalism is entirely rooted in word games and perverting God's word to make it mean what your feelings want it to mean. You've made God into your own image because you can't fathom the thought that when his word speaks of eternal death, it means it. Universalism twists God into a thing that can only adhere to the power that its doctrine allows. When God sent his eternal son to die for dead lost souls, it was for the purpose of giving those dead lost souls eternal life. Keep reading the Bible through your biased lens. I'll continue to study it the way God told me to and rightly divide it so I and others will not fall into the lie you're in. So here's my response to Zealous Warren after I realized he was a King James only person, he or she, 
Zealous One, using, using the KJV only, the King James Version only, will limit your understanding greatly. But even the KJV re reveals the salvation of all. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 6, 4, 10, John 1, 29, 3, 17, 12, 32, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 28, Romans 5, 18, 1 John 3, 8, on and on. But it's obvious you don't believe these passages, probably because you're hung up on the mistranslations, eternal and everlasting and forever and ever. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9 and Revelation 20, 10. And that was the last of our exchange. My best advice for you on how to handle those that believe in the King James only and adhere and defend it and use it solely, thinking that that is the only true word of God. Just give them verses straight out of the King James that show the salvation of all, just like I did in that last response in our exchange on YouTube. Now, you can give them one verse, you can give them five, you can give them ten, I don't care. Sometimes just giving them one is enough for them, hopefully, to see the drastic contradictions within their own idol Bible, the King James only. Now, if they truly are hungering for the truth and not just wanting to debate and prove their point, then the truth will set them free because the truth is within the King James Bible. Now, there's a lot of lies in there also, but God has also revealed to them the truth so that they will be without excuse in the day of judgment. So let's take a quick look at what it would look like, hopefully from their viewpoint, when they're presented with the salvation of all, then they will have to reconcile in their mind, because they know all the eternal torment verses. They know those by heart. But when they see these put together face to face, what are they going to do with that? Let's take a look and compare now, and we can see what hopefully they will face and what hopefully will awaken them to the truth the truth of God's Word within the King James Bible. We can see right within the King James Version itself is a contradiction that leads many to believe in everlasting destruction, or some versions have eternal destruction, which nullifies in their minds the truth of 1 Timothy 4.10, which is right in the King James Version. So let's take a look at 2 Thessalonians 1.9. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power? Compare that with 1 Timothy 4.10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So when faced with these two scriptures, the King James only reader can only truly believe one of these. Now obviously they can explain away 1 Timothy 4.10, but if we take it for what it actually says, that God is the Savior of all men, that contradicts the idea of everlasting destruction for some. So the question comes to mind, how can he be the savior of all men if some undergo everlasting destruction? They can't both be true. Here is a contradiction that leads to believing the lie of eternal torment, everlasting annihilation. The contradiction, and this is just one. We could have used several other verses, but 2 Thessalonians 1.9 often is the go-to verse for eternal tormentists, annihilationists, and 1 Timothy 4.10 is one of the go-to verses of those that proclaim universal salvation through Christ. The solution is found in the proper translation in the Concordant Liter Literal New Testament in 2 Thessalonians 1.9. Who shall incur the justice of Ionian extermination from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength? So we have everlasting destruction versus Ionian extermination Everlasting and Ionian are both translations of the Greek singular Ionian. So everlasting is not a good translation. Ionian pertains to things within the eons, which have beginnings and ends. Ionian is a correct translation, a good translation of Ionian. It reveals to us that the destruction or extermination is not everlasting, but lasts for a duration within the span of the eons. So now it's up to the King James only defender to put this contradiction to rest within their own mind or to live with the contradiction within their go-to Bible, the King James Version. Now let's take a look at a simple and quick test to determine if your go-to Bible is rat poison. I mean, it's mostly truth, but there's enough poison, there's enough lies in there to keep you from seeing the truth that is within the Bible that you open, maybe every day, the Bible that you trust, 
the Bible that you've read for years, maybe decades. I've come to Bible Gateway for a list for 2 Thessalonians 1 9 in all the Bible versions that they have, the English versions, and I did a, a find, a search for the word everlasting. So we have that highlighted in the magenta, would that be pinkish? I don't know what the color is. Anyway, so we can see here it says everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting ruin, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting perdition, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, rat poison. Everlasting hell, rat poison. Everlasting destruction, everlasting destruction, everlasting destruction. Everlasting damnation, rat poison. Everlasting perdition, rat poison. Everlasting pains, rat poison. Then I went through the same list and searched for eternal. Eternal destruction, rat poison. Eternal exclusion and banishment, rat poison. Eternal destruction, eternal destruction, eternal destruction. Eternal destruction, eternal destruction. Eternal punishment and destruction, rat poison. Eternal destruction, eternal destruction, rat poison. Rat poison, 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 rat poison. Eternal exile, rat poison, rat poison. All of these are rat poison, and there's more rat poison. And finally, I did a search for forever within Second Thessalonians one nine in all of these versions. Destruction that continues forever, rat poison. Destroyed forever, rat poison. Destruction that continues forever, rat poison. They will be punished in everlasting hell forever, rat poison. Rat poison, rat poison, rat poison, rat poison, rat poison. Go to concordant.org to version. Read Concordant New Testament online. And there you have it. The New Testament and the Concordant Literal Translation. Get yourself a Bible that will not poison you. That poison will cripple you spiritually. You can also order a hard copy version of the Concordant Literal New Testament. I hope that you realize the truth of the salvation of all that was accomplished for you by Jesus' death and resurrection for you and the entire creation. Jesus loves you and God loves you. You are not a rat regardless of what Satan may think about you. You are a human being who is very valuable to God, who created you in his wonderful image.